Hi everyone, in this lesson I want to look at some uh, more complex examples of uh, absolute value equations and inequalities. So here's an example here uh, that has an uh, absolute value in it and the key to solving an absolute value equation or an inequality is to first of all isolate the absolute value, get it all by itself on one side. So what I need to do is I need to take this 7 over here and then I need to divide by the 3. So I'm going to get the absolute value of 2x minus 5, I'll leave the 3 there for right now, is equal to 6 when I add 7 to both sides. And I'll divide both sides by 3. I have to divide the whole side by 3, but that's going to cancel out the 3 on this side and I'll get 2 on the other side, so I get uh, the absolute value of 2x minus 5 is equal to 2. So now that I have the absolute value isolated, then I can break it into its two parts. The two parts are again 2x minus 5 equals 2, just drop the absolute value, pretend it doesn't exist, or uh, turn the equation or inequality around in this case it's still an equal sign and then put a negative 2. And then if you solve those two pieces that will give you your solution. So I've got 2x is equal to 7 and x will equal 7 halves. Over here I'll get 2x is equal to 3 and x is equal to 3 halves and that would be the solution of that absolute value equation. Again the key is to first isolate the absolute value. On this second example I have two absolute values and if I have the absolute value uh, uh, of 5t plus 7 equals the absolute value of 4t plus 3, you do basically the same thing that we did before. The, the key to understanding this is that this thing inside here, uh, inside of the absolute value, could either be positive or it could be negative, right, because the absolute value would lop it off. Um, and the same thing over on this side. And so technically, you could have a positive 5t plus 7 equaling a positive 4t plus 3, or you could have a positive 5t plus 7 equaling a negative 4t plus 3, uh, negative being outside the whole thing. Or you could have a negative of this whole quantity equaling the positive of this whole quantity, or the negative of this whole quantity equaling the negative of this whole quantity. Well, if you if you boil that down, a couple of those, right, the positive one equaling the positive one is going to be the same thing as the negative one equal the negative one because you just divide by a negative. So you actually still end up with just two uh, basic parts. Uh, you're going to end up with, with either the 5t plus 7 equaling the 4t plus 3, so just drop the absolute values, and the other part would be where 5t plus 7 equals the opposite, the negative of 4t plus 3. And it wouldn't really matter if you put the negative on this side and a positive on this side. It'll still be the same thing. But you still end up with two parts, and you just solve those two parts, and you'll get the correct answer. All right. So in this case, if I subtract 4t from both sides, I'll get t on this side is equal to negative 4. Over here, I have to distribute the minus sign. So I'll get uh, 5t plus 7 is equal to a negative 4t minus 3. So now if I add 4t to both sides, I'll get 9t on this side and bring the 7 over here. That's negative 10. So t is a negative 10 nights. Okay, two answers. Another thing I just point out on this problem, if you're not sure, you don't know how to solve something algebraically, and this one is definitely a little tricky, uh, you could always solve it graphically. You could uh, open your graphing calculator and then see, graph the two parts and see where they intersect. So let's go ahead and graph the absolute value. Let me get the that one cleared out there. So the absolute value is under the number, under the math menu, the arrow where it says numbers. The absolute value of, uh, I have to use x on my calculator instead of t. Okay. And then let's also do the absolute value of 4, and again x instead of t, plus 3. I'll just graph this on my standard window here. 
So there's the first absolute value. There's a second absolute value. And if you look closely here, um, you can see it looks like there's going to be a point of intersection up here, and then there's one down here. And this point of intersection up here is going to be the one at negative 4. If I go over here at negative 4, um, there's going to be a place where they cross. And then there's going to be another one over here at uh, the negative 10 ninths, negative 1. Let me do that on, get a little bit better window there maybe. You can at least see this one here that's going to intersect a little bit to the left of negative 1, which is exactly this other point we found there. Okay, but the point being that if you're ever unsure, remember that you do have a, a graphing calculator typically that you're able to solve it with as well. Alright, let's go to the last example right here. This is posed using function notation. I have a function that has an absolute value in it, and I'd like to know where that function is greater than 12. So let's just go ahead and get rid of the function and just write instead 30 minus 4 times the absolute value of x plus 2 greater than 12. So again, the first thing I want to do once I have this is I want to isolate that absolute value. I want to get that all by himself. So let's go ahead and, and subtract 30. Let's take the 30 on the other side here. That's going to give me negative 18. So we've got negative 4 absolute values of x plus 2. It's going to be greater than negative 18. And then I need to get rid of this negative 4. Again, I want to get that absolute value by itself. So let's divide both sides by negative 4. And don't forget that if you ever divide or multiply by negative, you have to reverse that inequality. So in this case, the negative 4s are going to cancel. And I'm going to get the absolute value of x plus 2 is now going to be less than. So this, because there was a negative, it actually changed the greater than, which was a, the disjunction into a less than. It's going to be a compound inequality. So uh, when I simplify this, I get 9 halves. All right, so once I have that, then I can go ahead and break it up into its two parts. I'm either going to get x plus 2 is less than 9 halves. Um, the other part, because it's a less than, I have to put the word and x plus 2 is greater than negative 9 halves. All right? And if you wanted to, because it is a less than, notice I could also have just put this greater than over on, on this side. Let me do it in red. Greater than negative 9 halves. And then you could just deal with this part right here. Um, try to get the x all by itself in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 2. Subtract 2. Uh, hopefully we can do that in our heads a little bit here. X is going to be less than, well, this is 4 and a half minus 2. That's 2 and a half, or 5 halves. Here I'm going to get X is greater than, let's see, negative 4 and a half minus another 2 is minus 6 and a half. I think that's greater than negative 11 halves. All right, so again, because the word and is between those, I can put those together. X is, on the one hand, greater than negative 11 halves and at the same time less than 5 halves. That gives me a nice interval between there. So my answer is going to be the interval between negative 11 halves and 5 halves.